Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. This episode is a guide on how to make your way through the entirety of Jailbreak Tunnel, the subchapter in which its last level awards you a brand new legend unit, the Aruran Cat. The prerequisites, the stuff that you will need before starting this tutorial, are exactly the same as for the previous episode looking through the stories of legend. So if you want to reference that, so just check that you've got everything you need, that video is there to look at. But in short, you need all your treasures in Empire of Cats, alright? Go, go and get them now. The last episode covered some specific levels between Parthenon and Alcatraz, and so this one will be dedicated entirely to the levels within Jailbreak Tunnel, and it begins with Sin and Punishment, which is almost a rerun of Villain's Jungle. This one, just like that one, features our Osts, which we need to protect well against with Meat Shields and bring in Bahamut for some large area of effect damage, or any unit you might have that does large area of effect damage and outranges the R Osts. Ranges you can check on the Battle Cats wiki. So this strategy is exactly the same as the one used to beat Villain's Jungle. You can make variations upon it, but principally four meat shields is quite important. You want all the meat shields you can get and some ranged good damage units are also important. Craze Legs Cat is also rather good for clearing out stuff that you want cleared out and hitting stuff that is behind the front of the enemy front lines. So for this level, I'd advise putting on a cat CPU. You don't need a rich cat because the start off gives you more than the monies you could ever want. So turn the CPU off at the start and immediately start meat shielding. And then behind those meat shields, you want to get Macho Leg Cat, Craze Legs Cat as well. Putting both of them out with at least two meat shields at all times, more if you don't feel comfortable with just using two here, and upgrading your worker cat when you get the chance, will give you the perfect start off that you need for this battle. In fact, you find yourself getting to max worker cat very quickly, at which point you could then wait to get to max monies, then you might as well let the CPU take over. And so what the CPU will do is spam everything it possibly can far more efficiently than any player could. It's so important that we have this efficiency because our Osts tear through meat shields ridiculously quickly. And so the CPU will only be not spawning things when the deploy limit is hit. With the amount of moose in the background, you will never be left wanting for monies. So if you want to experiment with more expensive units like Paris Cat, if you have that, that could probably benefit you. Just make sure to check that the ranges work without ranging the Arosts. Another reason that we let the CPU go early is so that it will spawn Bahamut almost immediately. That means if your Bahamut does happen to die, there might be a chance that you can get a second one before the Arosts overrun everything and destroy your base. So that's just happened here. You can see that the meat shields and the dragons and the legs are actually holding up remarkably well. Because we have the meat shield protection, the legs, dragons, etc. stack up into a huge powerful force and have actually destroyed the Arosts anyway. With stalling power like that, even if the Arosts were actually slowly beating you, there is a chance you'd be able to get a Bahama again. And so that CPU power with stacked powerful units such as the dragons and the legs should be able to get you through sin and punishment. For prison sentence, you want to reduce the number of meat shields you have probably to the two tanks so that you can move in both fishes, basically because this will be a level where you need to use your anti-red power. Now, if you have both of these and happen to have the rare gacha cat fisherman cat, I would advise putting that in the top row with both of them. That will give you a defense up combo for your units that should really help them. But of course, as this is a no gacha guide so that it can be applicable to everyone, we're going to go through it with this no gacha strategy. At the start, meat shield against the dark doges that appear, but not too much because you don't want to make your way to the base immediately. If you feel that you're pushing through them quite quickly, just let them push back through you and start again when they're nearer to your base. Once you work a cat at max, you want to consider putting out everything except your expensive units. The reason you want to do that is because you'll want your expensive units to be behind as many meat shields and stacking units like the dragons and the legs as possible. And that's best achieved by activating the boss wave here first and then putting them out. So as you can see, here's the shy boy, then 
Hopefully you'll have enough monies to get yourself a Hama. Just be careful on how much you're spending to try and keep it above four and a half thousand. Always be meat shielding regardless of how many monies you have and try and spawn the whale variants where you possibly can because they will bring you some good anti-red power. Additionally, Valkyrie Cat can be very useful in its true form because it has the chance to freeze units. Now there are different ways you could approach this level. There's probably a fair argument for bringing more meat shields if you don't feel comfortable with the number of meat shields that are used here. You could bring Bomber Cat if you have that, which is a special true form that you can get after beating into the future chapter 3. If you have any anti-red units that can outrange a shy boy, which is a lot of anti-red units, be sure to use that in your strategy. Quite a lot of different strategic things you can do with this level. But if you're limited for options, make sure to bring your whale and your crazed whale. You can see that the area of effects, and especially wave attacks from the crazed legs cat, are really useful for the amount of BB bunnies and dark dojas that come out. Make sure that you prioritise area of effect, especially if you don't have crazed gross done. Harry Tunnel is a level similar to Labyrinth of Hades, where we have competing factors of a wave enemy and units that need meat shielding against. Those two don't go well together, but we kind of need to prioritise one. And again, in this case, it's having some meat shielding there, otherwise you're just going to be overrun. You can actually use the same strategy as for Prison Sentence here. With the idea that only having two meat shields provides just the amount of protection that you need, but no more than that to a point where you'd get hit by the waves more than you need to. Most of this stuff is good for overpowering the stuff behind the quarries. Holy Valkyrie is very useful for getting freezes off, especially if you don't have an anti-traitless unit, and then Bahamut for getting big loads of damage off, which you still can amongst quarries. Just don't be too disappointed if he's made to miss his attacks or is knocked back and killed because that's the sort of thing that does happen. If you happen to have Octopus Cat, that is a golden ticket for this level. Both anti-floating, which will be useful for the Albrows, and anti-wave, in fact, wave blocking. You'll want to use this slow start off to your advantage, so upgrade your Worker Cat a little bit and let the stuff arrive at your base, because luring them makes fighting them at your base just a little bit easier and keeps you further away from their base so that you can start the battle a little bit later and prepare a little bit better. Then you'll see a gory black appear at which point you want to meet shield a little bit more but it's the same principle as in the previous level. If you find yourself pushing too far forward let them push you back. This shouldn't really happen because eyebrows start to appear and they're actually quite powerful and then you just want to build up a stack of legs, dragons and the like. The good thing about using these legs and dragons is that you are able to upgrade your worker cat without too much of a worry if you've done it a little bit too much. Because they're quite cheap, you can spam them out easily even if you've just spent most of your monies on a worker cat upgrade. Just make sure you're prioritising having units out there over upgrading your worker cat. So what we're going to do now we've got the monies for it is put Bahama out immediately and then protect it as best we can. The advantage of that is that when we start trying to kill the main boss wave of stuff, Bahama will be going through its recharge time phase so that if this one dies, there's a decent chance we'll be able to get another one. Valkyrie is quite quick as a unit, so you need to be a little bit more careful about putting that one out straight away and I'd advise waiting so that you can protect her behind your units a little bit better. All you need to make sure of as you're nearing the base is that you've got enough money for Valkyrie. And once you get to the base, the Corys will appear. Get your Valkyrie out from behind these units so that she can be well protected. Then, spam everything you've got. It will look a little bit of a mess when you look at the battlefront and thinking, these waves aren't doing me any good. But the thing is, you need to protect against the stuff behind the Corys so the meat shields do kind of become necessary. And you might see a lot of death going on, but you will be chipping away at the quarries. However, we can be a little bit more particular about this. When your Bahama is dead and your Valkyrie as well, and the Gory Blacks aren't around, it might be worth not meat shielding at all. When Gory Blacks appear again, you might need to meat shield to protect yourself, but minimising contact with waves is a sensible thing to do. And there we go, our recharge time has helped us there. We've got another Bahama ready, so we're going to meat shield around that once again and hope that we can get an attack off. Unfortunately, hope is the operative word here. 
And as you can see, that shot was quite clutched. If you don't manage to get one like that, or your Valkyrie doesn't pull off the freezes that you might want it to, you can always force close and try again. And then, once the core is gone, you can of course meet shield normally again. And it'll be useful too, as there are still lots of enemies to push through before you've got to the base. Another way you could do it is by just spamming the crazed tank. By doing this, you might actually fairly often get the good outcome where the Cory is essentially tricked, where it goes to attack something that has just died and therefore doesn't release a wave attack. There are ways in which that might leave you more unprotected, but there is also an argument for saying that that quite well mitigates the amount of waves that you're going to receive. However, I'd still recommend meat shielding with both of the units when Bahamut is around. Or if you have a better unit to use than Bahamut that attacks faster, for example, definitely go for using that. Harry Tunnel's a bit of a difficult one to represent how to do no gacha. So if you have any questions about whether a unit you're planning to use could be useful, feel free to ask. This is unfortunately a hit and miss trial and error strategy if you're having to resort to using stuff that can't block wave attacks and having only one unit, Holy Valkyrie, that has effects against traitless enemies. Dead Falls features as its boss the Metal Seal. And so for this one, if you're doing it no gacha, I'd advise you bring Major Space Cat, which can be got from the Red Cyclone, the guy being in an eye, hopefully appearing at roughly this point. Now, Major Space Cat is majorly good for this stage because it is ranged. If you use all your meat shields in front of it, you can protect a big old stack of these major space cats, which means that getting a critical hit or enough critical hits to kill the metal seal and the metal enemies that group around it should be fairly easy. Now, being able to protect it is part of the reason we have four meat shields. The other reason is because when you're not critical hitting a metal enemy, every single attack does one damage, regardless of what it's from. So, meat shields are kind of your second best thing to be attacking metal enemies with. Each hit will be doing a little bit of chip damage towards those metal enemies, and every little helps. First thing to do then upon getting in the level is just protect against this seal here with a whale to regulate the red enemies and a crazed legs cat if you have that with you to regulate the squirrels that appear alongside. Same principles as before with money generation for your worker cat. If you feel yourself pushing forward quite far, don't spawn anything else and let yourself be pushed back. Okay, so we've got full max monies and the max worker cats, so we're ready to go. Let's just start up the stack of major space cats and the meat shields in front of them. And because all the units are relatively cheap, we're just going to put all of them out as soon as we possibly can. As you can see, the major space cats are now stacking up into a sort of single clump protected by the meat shields. This, if the metal seal doesn't get too far into our meat shielding front line, will form eventually a decent likelihood of getting the critical hits that we're looking for. And you can see they're starting to materialise now. As a kind of secondary advantage to think about, but something not to rely on, the crazed whale cat and island cat are also capable to a very small chance of critical hitting. So if you don't get it from the major space cats, you might well get it from them. Now, obviously, when you're waiting for a critical attack to happen, each run's gonna be a little bit different with how lucky you get. The first time I tried this level, just to check it, I actually got it done really rather quickly. This one is taking a lot longer. The clump of seals that are appearing behind could be a reason to bring Bahamut along with you, but we're still dispensing with the seals quite well, stacking these mid-price mid recharge time units. Now the way critical hits work is that when a critical hit strikes a metal enemy, it does double damage that an attack would normally do, but to the metal enemy rather than it being one damage. So the higher level you have, your major space cat, whatever critical hitter you're using, the more damage each critical hit will do and so the easier the level will be. My major space cat for reference is level 12. You can see from this H Nile that's just appeared here that it's not really being much of a problem. That's quite a lot due to the fact we have the crazed legs cat here waving it away because it's in the back lines and it's sort of fighting it that way. But when it gets any further forward, our huge stack of legs and dragons is also dealing with it quite well. Again, could be an argument for bringing Bahamut along with you. That's the joy of the game is that you can choose what you bring along and tailor it to work for you. Now the two metal enemies that we just killed, they really were got rid of on a matter of attrition, just hitting them and not even critical hitting them because metal hippos are weak enough to be able to do that with. 
The battle seal, not so much. We managed to get enough critical hits on it eventually, and that took quite a lot longer than my first run. As I said, with critical hits and waiting for them, it's going to be different every run. And in that spirit, if it's really not working out for you, and the metal enemies start to hit your base, just force close, try again, and you'll probably get better luck with the critical hits the next time you try it. Pitfall Zone is a level of ranged attrition. Featuring a face and a load of sloths, it's mostly about outranging with a stack while meat shielding to avoid that stack being killed. Takes a little bit of time, but if you maintain your position, nothing much really happens in the level before you win. So this is an idea for a strategy for it. Bring yourself one fast meat shield like Craze Cat and then some other meat shields just to fill in the gap so that you're always maintaining your position. Then the most important things are really these three units here. And the Craze Legs Cat is especially important throughout the battle because if you have it, its waves can move past the face and hit the slots while you're hitting at the face, which can help to destroy both of them at the same time and make the level easier for you. But principally, you want legs and dragons to be able to keep a stack going. The Titans really is insurance for the Dark Emperor Nyandam that comes out afterwards, but it's not so much of a bother, so probably you can get away with having two dragons in there to increase the size of your stack. Because of how long it can take, I'd advise bringing a speed up with you, but other than that, no items required. And immediately upon entering the level, the boss will come out. So just start with getting some units out and upgrading your worker cat a modest little bit. That way you can afford the sort of stuff that you're putting out. Once you've stabilised yourself, get a few more meat shields out. Legs, legs, and then when you can afford them, dragons. And go on like this. Just bear in mind that when using a speed up, it will be harder to maintain your position, because although you might be able to spam all three of the meat shields before the recharge time ends, every tiny bit of time lost in the tapping of them, which is inevitable, will be exacerbated by the speed up. Obviously, because the level starts immediately, a rich cat will make it a lot easier for you, so if you have one of those, do feel free to bring it. But if you can get your worker cat up to about level four or something similar to that, getting these stacking units out shouldn't be too difficult. Because both the face and the sloths attack in sort of huge amounts of damage relatively rarely, putting out two quick meat shields like this is probably just as effective as having the three. If you don't feel comfortable spamming with two, of course you can put out all three, but it will save you a bit of monies to do it this way. And there you go, once the face dies, that triggers the enemy limit within the stage as there's one slot left to fill, which is immediately filled by the Dark Emperor Nyandam. But because the face is gone, you'll need to maintain your position is gone as well. You can just push forward as far and as fast as you possibly can and just stall the Dark Emperor and Iron Dam from moving forward through you, which should be relatively easy if you've got something like Craze Titan along, which should survive a hit, just like that. And there you go. Speed up well worth it really, especially for this last part of the battle, just to get it over with quickly. It's just mainly about sticking it out and maintaining your position. Once you've done that for long enough, all of the enemies within the level will be gone. The Great Escaper is the stage where if you beat it with a treasure radar on, you can get yourself the Aruran Cat. It is a legend unit that can help you knock back almost any type of enemy, and from a no gacha point of view, or a, I don't have quite the right gacha unit for this point of view, it is very useful. And for when you eventually get onto four star stories of legend stages in your Battle Cats career, it's useful for that as well. Now this level's got a lot in it. It's got the Aruran Cat, Shadow Boxer Ks, Boar, and the Return of the R. Ost again. So, lots of stuff, and in that vein, what you want is maximum efficiency of meat shielding. So we're going to be using a CPU and four meat shields, I would suggest, for this stage. Then we've got Crazed Whale Cat for the boars, doing damage to them. Also for the boars, these dragons help quite a lot hitting in a single shot long range attack from quite far away but doing good damage with it. Then to attack everything that it possibly can and add to the stack of stuff behind the meat shields, Crazed Legs Cat. And then for chances of freezing, Holy Valkyrie Cat. And for the damage, Crazed Bahamut Cat. Now it would be worth checking in your filters 
to see if you have anything more specifically tailored to traitless. Also, make sure to check that unit's range on the Battle Cats wiki to make sure it outranges the Aruran Cat enemy, otherwise it's just going to die really quickly, and that's not very much fun for anyone. Just to clarify on the levels of my units that have been the same throughout this guide and the one before it, all of my crazed units are level 20. All of the true forms I have for basic units are level 20 plus 10, the very minimum for having that true form, and any basic unit that isn't in the true form is less than that. So my macho cat is level 20 plus 9, and my dragon cat is level 20 plus 6. By this point in the game, those levels should be easily achievable. My special legend units, Holy Valkyrie Cat and Crazed Bahamut Cat, are level 30, and the level 30 unlocks once you reach 1,600 user rank. So, CPU on, we don't need rich cats, so we can build up monies at the start, and we don't really want a sniper the cat because we're trying to land shots with Bahamut, and we don't want it missing because of the sniper cat. So, you turn off your CPU at the start of the battle, and start with some meat shielding to protect from the lots of squire elves at the start. And what might actually be quite good to do with them is pitch an enemy against them that doesn't deal with them all that well. And that is the dragon. Because of its single shot non-area of effect attack, it can only deal with one at a time. Which means that you're going to be stalled quite effectively by the squire elves. Giving you a nice way to both build up your worker cat and get a large stack of dragons that can move towards the base and do a decent bit of damage. In that vein, once you've got quite a few dragons, it might be worth putting out the crazed legs as well, and then sending out a few more razors to go along with it towards the enemy base. Make sure your worker cat is up to max when it hits the base, and just don't be spawning anything at this point. That is because we want to lure the Auroran cat enemy, and the reason for that is because it knocks stuff back, like the unit that you'll eventually get if you beat the stage with the treasure radar. And because of that, we don't really want to be fighting it here, because it's going to quite effectively push us backwards. We want to build up as much as we can from our base, and then push it back, rather than having that done to us. So... Once the Shadow Boxer Ks are at the base, you can knock them back with a cannon like this to make sure Bahamut lands a shot, and at that point, it might be worth putting the CPU on. Now, we're building up the greatest possible clump of stuff to be as powerful as it can possibly be to take on the Aruran and push it back on our own terms. Now, as this is a pretty high-stakes stage and you've got your treasure radar staked on it, I would suggest staying with the stage here and not going off to make a cup of tea because there are occasional moments within the stage where your monies will end up running quite low. And when they do, you'll want to add to the CPU's meat shielding by making sure that you are putting out as many of your meat shields as you can because that is always the priority and the CPU may decide that it's saving up for something else and you don't want it to be doing that at the expense of your meat shields. So Bahamut got an incredible shot there, and just bear in mind that this might not happen. Bahamut may be caught out, Bahamut may be killed as a result of it, but remember that you can force close this stage and try again, and the likelihood is, within a couple of runs, you will get better luck with the Bahamut. Here comes the Arost then, so our huge stack of dragons and all four meat shields should help with that, but you can already see what we've got thinning out massively. And this is another moment of truth, whether the Bahamut attack will land on the Shadow Boxer Ks. Luckily, it does. If it doesn't, the Shadow Boxer Ks will rip through the meat shielding and probably the Bahamut as well. And this is an especially difficult point of the battle, and one where you do probably have to end up watching your monies. Boar and Arost at the same time. You may want to move stuff back with the cannon, so that it moves into Bahamut's range like that. But if you're not confident doing that, don't bother doing that, because sometimes it can make Bahamut miss. And there you go, the boar is gone, and because of our meat shielding, we've stacked up against the Arost quite well. A little bit more power, and that'll be gone as well. Valkyrie got a lovely freezing hit off there. Comparably, I'm just going to disclose that this is a really good run, and it's unlikely to go as well as this for you. Just remember that if it is not going well and the enemies make their way to your base, you can force close and try again without wasting your energy or items as it stands currently. And as you give the level another go, you should be able to get better luck that time. 
If you're not sure that you'll win at all, even with the force closing, don't bring a treasure radar with you. Bring no items with you at all and maybe just give yourself a sort of sight to go and that way you're only wasting energy that you're going to get back through the passage of time. Treasure radars is only worth committing to them when you're sure you're going to win. But if you do win with the treasure radar, the Aruran unit is yours and therefore you can go to the upgrade menu and activate it and the beginner aim in the stories of legend is complete. The Aruran wolf slash cat, the difference in names is to do with which form it's in, can now be a part of your army and teams up with Valkyrie and Bahamut as legends that you can choose between. That was the guide on how to get to and beat the Great Escaper. Now, if you have any questions or queries or this isn't working, please let me know in which way and what your query is and hopefully I can help you. Remember to take advantage of the continued nature of these stages. As they stand, every single one of these Stories of Legend stages allow you to force close and try again without wasting energy and items. And for a lot of these stages, that will allow you to have a better chance at doing better. In Dead Falls, for example, one run may give you a better likelihood of getting critical attacks than another run. In The Great Escaper, your Bahamut may get the attack in perfectly in a run like mine did there and not in another and you can just not waste any energy searching for that run. But fundamentally, if it's not working in any circumstance, of course I'm still happy to help and happy to help in any circumstance, so please do ask. Having got Aurora and Wolf slash Cat, the last two craze stages that we need to do, which are Bird and Axe, will become significantly easier. And additionally, it's going to help us a lot with the last levels of Into the Future Chapter 3, which at this point you should be making your way through to try and get towards the moon. But that'll do it for now. I hope this tutorial has been useful. I bid you goodbye, and I hope you enjoyed.